Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> if I could have your attention, please. If everybody could settle, we'd like to get started. We're actually a little bit late already, so we want to get going right away because it's going to be an exciting day. Welcome to the University of Waterloo. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Waterloo Institute for Health Informatics Research and AGFA, I welcome you here to a great day of discussion, talk, thought, and talk. Uh, I've got a bit of the agenda up there, which we will get to in, in a minute. We'll talk a little bit about the logistics. But uh, because we're running a bit behind, I'd like to introduce to you our president of the University of Waterloo, uh, David Johnson, who will do the welcome. David? Thank you very much, Shirley. What a delight to be here. Uh, and thank you all for taking the time out of your schedules to being here. Dominic uh, gave me uh, some bullet points to indicate the nature of this symposium today, and it clearly is ambitious. Just to make that clear, let me underline several of them. To identify and explore potential opportunities for new health informatics solutions enabled by new and emerging technologies and methods. To foresee emerging health system requirements and to define the types of solutions required. To begin to discern opportunities at least three to five years beyond the present. Uh, that's quite a challenge given how quickly change is occurring in this area. Topics will range widely. Imaging, electronic patient health records, ubiquitous computing, bioinformatics as it impacts the health system, future technologies and opportunities, possible convergences, new concepts and methods that will enable departure from current constraints. And what a menu like that indicates is what a vast playing field we have in which to operate. So thank you all for being here uh, to focus your attention on these and other issues. And a special thank you to AGFA for making this conference possible, uh, bringing us all together. Uh, AGFA has been that ideal partner for an educational institution in so many ways. Uh, Dominic, whom you'll hear from shortly, chairing the conference, holds the AGFA NSERC Chair in Health Informatics, and I simply can't count the number of ways that AGFA have been so helpful as we have been taking a major role in this wonderful field of health informatics. Uh, wonderful to see some great friends in the audience, uh, Mike Connolly and Brennan Connolly from Smart Systems for Health Agency, with whom I've had a great pleasure to be associated uh, for the past uh, 18 months or so are here. Uh, John Tennant, John, just raise your hand over here. The uh, Executive Director of Canada's Technology Triangle, which uh, I, per I call Canada's Technology Triangle and Canada's Talent Triangle. It's that area bounded by uh, Guelph at one corner, uh, Heidelberg where I live, or the northwest west of uh, Waterloo County at another corner, and downtown Cambridge or Galt uh, as a third uh, corner. Uh, and our uh, objective is to, to bring talent, uh, to bring uh, business uh, to this community. John and his colleagues uh, leads that successfully. Bill Tatham, just over here, and Dominic's left, uh, who uh, chairs the Toronto chapter of our uh, Information uh, and uh, Communications Technology uh, uh, Committee for our uh, University of Waterloo uh, $260 million campaign, and many others here uh, who are lending their presence. The title is so appropriate, New Visions for New Times. Uh, clearly, these are new times uh, in our area of endeavor. And uh, clearly, uh, we have the need for new vision and new energy. Uh, perhaps the greatest discovery in recorded history has taken place in these times within the past two or three years of the unraveling of the human genome. And it's so clear how uh, intellectual endeavor played such a key role in that, in particular computational mathematics uh, over a number of years uh, to bring us to the point where we understand uh, at least the architecture of the human makeup and so much else that follows. Uh, but the importance of health and the opportunities that health informatics uh, bring uh, to health are uh, simply overwhelming, and that's not an overstatement. Uh, just to make uh, that case uh, a striking glimpse of the obvious for all of you here, 15% uh, of the GDP of the United States expected to rise to 17% per, 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 uh, in the next year or two is devoted to health. I was reading in yesterday's newspaper that uh, Ford now spends uh, more time on uh, health uh, and health care for its existing employees and its pensioners than it does on steel uh, in making automobiles and trucks, uh, a very interesting uh, commentary. Uh, Canada, of course, is in the 10% range. And when you look at any jurisdiction in the world, 
uh, the importance of health is simply overwhelming and the rising uh, needs and costs uh, simply uh, go on and on. Um, that kind of quadruple play of uh, containment of costs, of working more efficiently, of uh, improving quality, and most important of all, seizing the opportunities that we have with intelligent technology, intelligent people to do things better, uh, just cries out for your kinds of intellectual um, and human endeavor. Um, yesterday, I was uh, with uh, uh, one of our major educational partners uh, here looking at the possibility of locating uh, in this area or establishing a significant a portion of their endeavor here. And uh, I had with me, as I often have when I want to make the very best case possible, three bright students. Uh, uh, there are many great parts of this university, and the greatest of the greatest uh, are our students. Uh, and these uh, three young software engineers uh, made the kind of impression you'd expect, uh, or one would hope, uh, they would make upon uh, a prospective uh, investor in this region. But what's so striking is that um, this particular company uh, has a significant interest in health informatics systems and solutions. And uh, as all of you know, has had enormous difficulty finding uh, trained, uh, educated people at every level of their endeavor. And uh, I asked each of these three software engineers, they were in third year, so they have been here for a little bit, and they are really remarkable people. There are 100 students in our software engineering program. They're chosen from about 1,200, and there would be many more applicants uh, if there was a sense that the prospects of entry were greater. And these uh, graduates are dually credentialed. They're credentials as uh, engineers, as computer and electrical engineering engineers, and they're also uh, accredited uh, by the appropriate professional body as uh, computer scientists. And we do try in their program not simply to concentrate a lot of technology to um, ensure that they have electives, et cetera, and they do. One of them uh, had pursued a minor in biology. Uh, the other had pursued a, a minor in political science. Uh, but no one of the three of them had had any exposure uh, into health informatics, in spite of the fact they'd had three co-op terms by that time. And no one of the three of them had thought at all about um, working uh, in the field of health informatics. Um, one of them had spent one year uh, in uh, one of Canada's, one of the world's leading children's hospital with a very serious uh, illness which, from which he's recovered and feels extraordinarily indebted uh, to the health system. And uh, his observation on his one year in hospital uh, was that how much it's still paper driven and how many mistakes he was able to observe as a young 11 year old, bright and so on, spending a year in that hospital. And it struck me during that um, uh, event yesterday with these three software engineers and knowing that I would meeting, be meeting with all of you today, uh, just how long, how big a gap we have to fill in making it clear to our younger people, both in undergraduate studies and graduate studies, uh, what a remarkable uh, and important field this is of health informatics and it's crying out uh, for talent. And if I could ask one thing of all of you here, uh, having thanked you for being here to focus your attention on these important matters, it would be to uh, let us work together uh, to make it clear what an exciting field this is and how much we need talented young people who not only are technically competent, but are integrative thinkers, are able to bring together expertise from a variety of disciplines, just listing those points of focus for your meeting today indicates how much we need integrative thinkers uh, to be sure that uh, when we gather again in five years' time, we will not be decrying a shortage of uh, highly educated, motivated people. Again, thank you for being here, and I look forward so much to the uh, results of your deliberations, and I look for, forward to many, many other occasions here at the University of Waterloo when we can work as a partner with all of you in advancing this uh, remarkable field of health informatics. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, David. Uh, now I'll ask uh, our representative from AGFA, Erkan Akuts, to give a welcome as well. Erkan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of AGFA, I would like to welcome all the first internal and external participants to the seminar. The, for companies like AGFA, the, where I mean we try to do business and then make money, etc., on the site, uh, it's not easy to raise our head out of the workbench and then look at what's out there where we should be going 
what kind of technologies that we should be looking ahead. The, we think this is a unique opportunity for us to basically to raise that head and then turn on the high beams and then look ahead. The, another unique opportunity for us, uh, I mean, about uh, today is having the both uh, researchers and the practitioners on the same table. Because in multiple occasions, we sit down with each group uh, uh, can I say in isolation. Sometimes within the marketing events, we sit down with our marketing or the practitioners of our products, and then we listen to them what they want to use and then what they need in their product. In different environments, we collaborate with the researchers, but uh, this is one of the unique uh, opportunities where all three of us are going to be around the same table and discuss. The second thing, the, maybe the last point, I would like to thank University of Waterloo to, to increase such an importance on the healthcare informatics. Uh, a little bit more than a couple of years ago, the ACFA initiated, of course, in joint with University of Waterloo, the research chair position, which is then the, the backed up by the uh, Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, NSERC of Canada, uh, to initiate and to the, encourage the research in healthcare informatics to the University of Waterloo. And yesterday we gladly heard that the, there are three more chairs just assigned by University of Waterloo on the topic of healthcare informatics. The, we are excited, and, the, and I mean, there is nothing more we can say, but uh, thank you for uh, recognizing the importance of healthcare informatics. The, without going a lot further, I would like to give the, uh, the mic back to Shirley and Dominic, which I think they are going to talk about the format and how we are going to proceed. Thank you. I guess in my haste at the beginning, I forgot to introduce myself, and I'm Shirley Fenton. I'm the Managing Director for the Waterloo Institute for Health Informatics Research. Before I introduce Dominic, I just want to do a couple of things uh, logistically, and that is to say that breaks and lunch will be next door in 1301. So we'll just leave here, and you can flow next door, come back, mingle around. Uh, in case you need, washrooms are to my right behind basically behind that wall if you go through those doors and it's just to your right-hand side. Uh, telephones, I know some of us still don't have cell phones. If you need a telephone, uh, it's uh, just outside this doorway here in the corridor. Uh, there's a message board in, the, in 1301 in case, uh, in case of emergencies. Uh, we will, uh, there is a phone number that has been given out so that if there is a message, we either get it to you directly or it will be posted on the message board. Uh, I presume all of you got your uh, nice, very nice package provided by AGFA. Inside that package there is, of course, the most important thing, the agenda, which you see up on the screen here. Uh, we'll go through a little bit of the format in a second. And I guess the, uh, the last thing that, uh, uh, a couple of last things, uh, there is also a complimentary copy of this book uh, that has been very gratefully provided. Uh, enterprise content management, what you need to know by one of our local leaders, uh, Tom Jenkins, uh, uh, the CEO and president of OpenText. Uh, so uh, by all means, pick up that. And uh, last but not least, my role today is, is timekeeper. So my message to the speakers is that I will try to keep you on track by flashing up these uh, uh, five minute, two minute, and one minute uh, uh, notices <laughs> when you get close to your 20 minute uh, uh, time period. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask me or any of our student volunteers. I think we've got a couple in this room already. David C. is at the back over here. David, if you just want to raise your hand. Uh, is there another? Oh, um, um, Bill, Bill Malik is over here. Bill, if you just maybe just stand and, and uh, 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 so people can see you. And we've got a couple of other people as well wandering around. So uh, ask me, Dominic, whoever. All right, uh, I'll now introduce Dominic Covey, the founding director of the Waterloo Institute for Health and Informatics Research. Uh, he's going to be the guider of our day. Uh, and uh, Dominic, if you would uh, talk to us a little bit about what we're going to do today. Thank you, Shirley, and welcome to all of you. I'll try to be brief because we're running a bit late, and I'd like to uh, move on as quickly as possible. Uh, just an overview. David gave you a beautiful overview of, the, of, the, of what our intentions are to look to the future. And that will be, I think, the big contribution is 
both from our speakers, who I hope will stimulate and among themselves raise issues, and from you. So we're looking very forward to a lively uh, discussion. Um, David gave the overview. Uh, uh, the other point is how we're organized during the day. Uh, each, uh, per, each speaker will speak for approximately 20 minutes. Then there will be about 15 or 20 minutes for discussion among the speakers. It may lead along a little bit to comment on some of the issues or raise or highlight issues from the speaker. And then about 20 or a little few, hopefully a few more minutes for discussion and comments from people who are here to participate in the audience. So that's the broad, uh, the, uh, broad idea. You'll see the topics if you look at the uh, uh, agenda. It should give you a pretty good idea of that. And you have in your material a... Uh, uh, in, uh, speaker bio sketches, which you can read. I'll just give you a couple of highlights. I'd like to introduce each of the speakers by doing that. Uh, Keith Dreyer, I met physically for the first time uh, last night, but intellectually many years before from his publications and had a really interesting time talking with him about the research he's doing in uh, diagnostic imaging, which he'll be talking about. He's the vice chairman of uh, radiology computing and information sciences at Mass General and an assistant professor of radiology at uh, Harvard. Uh, he's a diagnostic radiologist. He's offered many articles. I've had the privilege to read many of them and uh, books as, uh, as well. Uh, John Glasser, who is in the middle uh, or towards this end here. I've known John for God knows how long, 25 years at least. Uh, I met John soon after he completed his PhD and went to work for Arthur D. Little. And we both work with uh, Erica Drazen at various points there. Uh, John is the vice president and CIO at Partners Healthcare System. He was VP before that at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Before that, he was uh, head of the healthcare consulting practice with Arthur D. Little. He set up organizations like Chime in, uh, uh, and uh, HIMSS, uh, past president of HIMSS. He was one of the key organizing factors of that. He's, America, he's a member of the American College of Medical Informatics as well. Um, next one is Elliot Siegel, uh, next to uh, the end there, the second from the end. Elliot is a professor and vice chairman at the University of Maryland uh, School of Medicine. Uh, he's written over 200 articles and book chapters, and he has a person who his name is almost identical to whom I sent at least three e emails before I got it right. But Keith has been very patient with me despite that. Uh, uh, Shanker Supermanian, who's the fuzzy guy on this side, and <laughs> Shanker is a, a new person to me, introduced to us by a friend of Murray uh, Mu Young here in chemical engineering. Um, I've read his uh, material and uh, since that, uh, really incredible stuff. He's had a lot of interesting ideas for the sessions today. Uh, Shankar is a professor of biomedical engineering and chemistry and biochemistry at the University of California at San Diego. He's joined appointment in the San Diego Computing Center. Uh, he was uh, formerly the uh, director of the computational biology group of the National Center for Supercomputing. Uh, clearly, he's got some uh, interesting backgrounds there. His present research focuses on the important aspects of computational biology. Uh, we believe that bioinformatics plays a big role in the next uh, decade, of, uh, and I think uh, Shanker will add a lot to that. Paul Tang, I've known of for a long while as well. First time I've, though, met him bodily. I don't know where, where is Paul? How did you escape from the table? <laughs> we need you up here. Um, we, by the way, last night we met with everybody. Almost everybody's name was Paul. It was hilarious. It was Paul Stoley and Paul Gild. And it was, made it easy. I don't have to remember any names. Uh, Paul's well known. He's the Chief Information Officer at Palo Alto Medical Foundation, Chair of the Committee on Data Standards for the Institute of Medicine. Been very active and a leader in the area of electronic uh, medical records and uh, uh, published a lot. Uh, worked with for uh, 10 years at Hewlett Packard developing medical applications. So almost everybody has, uh, has had academic and industrial backgrounds, so very interesting group of people. So that, that's the overview of, of the speakers. And I think I'm allowed now to introduce the first talk, right, just to get started? Are you doing that? or? Okay. So the first uh, talk, very simply, is uh, John Glasser talking about com communications and ubiquitous computing. <laughs> 